Christmas present. Merry Christmas, Bill Carr and Jim. 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 Seen the settling iron in here? Could be. Mr. Carr, this. <coughs> How are you? Good to see you, Jim. Hello, how are you? Good to see you, Jim. Hello, You can't imagine what I want to talk about. <laughs> well, listen, I'm, I'm very disturbed and upset about what's going on with this thing. I know that well, as we talked the other morning, but you hear the cabinet room, both proposals, my Republican proposal and the way the things have got some things that we all don't like. But I just don't believe that if we let this process die, uh, that we're ever going to, certainly not while I'm here, have a chance to get out again. And my belief is if we can keep it moving and get it in the Senate and then into a conference, and I assure you that if it comes out of Turkey, after all of that, no, then I'm the last resort on people. But right now, I think the whole image is going to be if, if we don't give enough support to get this out that come next election uh, it'll be the Democrats saying that they wanted to have tax reform for the people and the people wouldn't have it. Now this tax reform is going to represent a tax decrease or at least certainly no increase for 88% of the people. 93% of our people are going to be in the 15 or 25% ranks. So that's a sizable reduction uh, for all of them. And as I say, there are some things we want corrected. I believe that in a conference committee, I think on the other side, there is some sentiment for that, that there were things that were done to get it out of the Ways and Means Committee that uh, they wouldn't fight too hard for, but to get it changed back. But this represents the lowest tax, would be the lowest tax for individuals in 50 years, since 1931. And it would be the lowest for business in 40 years, since 1941. And no one's gotten off the ground up until now with any idea of tax reform. So you want to sound off and tell me that I'm, I'm begging for your help. If I, can ask you, uh, if I can just ask you a question about something you said uh, relative to your possible veto of the tax bill. Um, do I infer that if it is not changed significantly, that perhaps that's what you would do? <laughs> Well, listen, I'm, I'm very upset at the way things are going and the whole slant that is being put on this now, and I look ahead to the thing that you all are looking forward to next year. And I can see the Democrats out there hailing the fact that they wanted to have tax, tax reform and uh, Republicans uh, defeated them. I don't know how we respond to that. This was our whole, whole idea on our side. We put it in there, and I grant you that there are things in both the tax proposals before the House now that, that uh, I disagree with. But what we really want is the tax, the process to go forward so that we can get at it not only in the Senate, but then in the conference committee. And as I told people in here before, I have reason, very strong reason to believe that in conference, uh, uh, Rostikowski is going to uh, be more amenable. Uh, that, that isn't even the right word. I think he's going to be very cooperative about eliminating some things that uh, may be in the present. Well, here's a tax proposal for two of them, that both of them, with all the faults that any one of us may find with them, are infinitely better than the present tax system. And to the extent that the Treasury Department study and the Council of Economic Advisors study reveals that either one of these present proposals would do a better job of keeping the economy growing than will the present tax structure. And to let this die now, all I'm asking is give us a chance to keep on going with the process. And if a turkey comes out of all of that, then uh, I won't sign it. I won't sign anything if it's a tax increase. I'm not going to go for 
things that would have vitiated this kind of legitimate kind of reform we want. But 88% of the people are either going to get a tax reduction or at least stay even with where they are. 93% uh, of, the, of the people are, well, wait a minute, two two lowest are, are going to, yes, yeah, going to be in the two lowest brackets. They're the 15 and the 25% bracket. Well, I'm sorry, Bob Davis. You're kind of up here. Huh? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Jim Jefferson, Vermont. Michael Arrakis. Hello there. Lewis from Florida. Sid Morris, from Washington. Hello, Mr. President. George Geek is from Pennsylvania. Hi. How are you, Mr. President? Well, come in. Like <laughs> that. <laughs> 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 Robinson, chairman of the 86 inaugural anniversary dinner dance, and Frank Karenkoff, chairman of the Republican National Committee. And then thanks to all of you, your generous financial support is very much appreciated. You've all been successful, and you've chosen to give some of that success back to America. And your contributions have helped to make our country strong. Our job isn't over, however. Challenges we face in '86 are critical not only to the party but to America. I was reminded of that yesterday. <laughs> we must continue forward, and not only have you generously contributed your personal resources, but you've contributed your time to ensure the success of this important event. So please keep up that tremendous work. It's so important to an even bigger and better Eagles program under the National Party. As a matter of fact, he's one of the all-time great fundraisers. He's 
particular affair in, in our party. And working together, we can leave America in the world a legacy of prosperity and freedom for future generations. Now, that's all I've got to say. Mr. President, we thank you very much for taking the time, particularly uh, in reference to what you mentioned yesterday. There's time, and I know it's very important to you. These people here today represent the vice chairman of the dinner dance from around the country. There are uh, 37 uh, members, and uh, all but seven were given very short notice, and they got here, and we're so proud of them. Their energy and enthusiasm is making this dinner dance a tremendous success. Jim Robinson has agreed to be our national chairman, and Red Blunt is one of our national co-chairmen. Ann Armstrong and Al Haig and Don Rumsfeld are the four uh, national co-chairmen. And of course, with the great help of Frank Ferenkoff, leadership we've been following for low these many, what, three years? <laughs> 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 and we gave uh, uh, Maureen the title of honorary, uh, national honorary co-chairman, and she has been uh, anything but honorary. She has been a great worker and helper, and we're just so delighted to have her helping us in this event. So uh, I just want to tell you on behalf of all these people that we're very appreciative that you've agreed to meet with us today and to support our dinner dance, and we're looking forward to seeing you and Mrs. Reagan on the night of January 21st. Oh, well, we're looking forward to that, too. <laughs> Jim's our national chairman, and I mentioned at our lunch today that he was going to put the whole dinner on his platinum card with American Express. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually over his limit. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say this is going to be another victory for the lawyers as we pick up. <laughs> Mr. President, this represents uh, quite an elite strike force here, and uh, we were talking at lunch about the gold as being $4 million, and that sounds low by about 50%. So uh, we're going out there and see if we can drum up about $6 million and set a record forever, and uh, you made our lives much better and much easier. Hope we can help make yours easier. Well, thank you very much. I don't want me to pick on lawyers or anything, but when you... <laughs> <laughs> We have a senator, a Republican senator, Al Simpson, who never comes in this room when the leadership of the Congress is down here without dropping a little tidbit in my ear. And his last one was a little hard on lawyers. <laughs> he was speaking about the cold snap here last week, and he said it was so cold that he saw a lawyer walking down the street with his hand in his own pocket. <laughs> my profession of three years ago until I get back into it. But Mr. President, uh, in, uh, in discussions today, we've served two years of, uh, of this term, uh, but also for the governors uh, across this country and, and the state legislatures and, and the future of the Republican Party. So uh, we're so proud that, that uh, they've offered their time and energy to, to help the party and, and to help. It's a big uphill fight in this year election. But we really ought to go out and appeal to the fairness of the American people. And you start to think how many times there's been a Republican executive, but always in these years with this hostile house. But the fact that they have controlled every 10 years the government with regard to reapportionment, and now lately more people in the United States vote for Republican candidates for Congress than are elected. It's an indication that there's been a little bit of going on. Just the and I think that it's time we appeal you know, to the people out there for a little, a little fairness. We've seen that in California particularly. Yes, yes. in their own state. I've often thought about the only good district they ever left us was south of the border. Are we ready for pictures? Yes, I'm supposed to go up here. Let's try.
See his mobile. Yes. Don't forget the pork and the crimson tide. That'd be a catfish for me. Say bye bye. Bye bye. Tell him where you're from. Mobile, Alabama. Eight miles.
the 11th commandment. <laughs> you might mention it to them. However, I can say to Republicans, remind them of that. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, well, this is good to see you all. You look good great. To see you look great. You look great. Yes, you do. And I have to tell you, if you, if you hear my voice and the sounds that everybody's talking about, the press is talking about my cold, I don't have a cold. I have allergies. <laughs> I think what's happening to me is, I think the White House, which is decorated with tough and powerful. He's giving it to you. I think that's what's happening. Just came up like that.